This is Davey Havoc. You are watching our track by track for our record Burials, which comes out this week. Singing that is the opening track with Burials is actually a fragment of a greater track that we wrote in the dark in the room that we were creating and in the room in which we were creating the, the record. Um, the fragment that you hear that opens the record was actually recorded when uh, I had left the studio, I came back and the guys had taken the, the greater song and edited it down uh, after having a conversation thinking that it would be a, uh, a good piece to open the record and uh, when I hear the song I actually always envision the, the, the greater work which may not ever be heard by anyone but the fragment will be heard as the opening to the record of Burials and we felt that it was a good way to um, start the record off to lead into what would be uh, the, the greater work. Hope You Suffer is the first track that we release to fans. Um, we want to give the people who have been waiting for music a piece of music first to give them a good insight to what we will be releasing later. And I Hope You Suffer is a good look into the, the tone of the record of Burials. It, it, it looks into the, the, the bleakness and uh, the unforgiving nature of, of the record as well. A Deep Slow Panic to me is a, a song that I think really indicates um, the, the sum of the suffocating feeling of the record. It's actually the title of the song I felt for a while might be the title of the record, in, or the record in its entirety. In the end, I, I feel that Burial, Burial speaks to the more multi-layered uh, sentiments that occur with, within the greater context, but I think that if you were to take one track that points to that, that mood and that, that suffocation, a deep self would be a good song to look to. New Resurrection is one of the few songs that was written in Oakland, California when we began writing. We did our first session uh, at my home in Oakland and there were seven songs written at that point and and the Resurrection was one of them, and it was one of those songs that we kept going back to and, and editing and detailing uh, before it got to a place that it, that it is now. Uh, it has a, an unlikely anti-chorus, which we don't usually work with, and we kept returning to it and, and tearing it down and building it up, and we ended up going in a more minimal direction that we did as, as can be heard on the Resurrection, and I was really happy with how it ended up. Seventeen Crimes is the single off of Burials, and upon writing it, I immediately felt this must be a single. We spent about 15 minutes working on that song before it was the place that we felt um, really happy with it in its, in its initial incarnation. Um, Jay just started playing a riff, it felt like the melody was already there. Uh, he moved on to the chorus, and again, it felt like the melody was something that I had already known, and with in those few moments we had written verse, chorus, break, and I created the top line and the lyrics came as easily and it felt like something that really pre-existed and upon the first time hearing it, even back in the demo stage, it gave me chills and I felt it was an importance. The Conductor is a, a very lush layered cinematic song that has a, a very driving tension to it. When Jay brought the music, which was completed from front to back, uh, I wanted to really further that feeling of tension with, with the melody that I was creating over it. And, um, I was really focused on that, and it's a it's a very uh, it's a very tragic track in its in its lyrical tone, and uh, it's something that initially wasn't going to be uh, for for the Burials record, but in the end we were so happy with it. That we really actually even early on we. Had, we decided that it was something that we should pursue for the record and I think it's a very important and very important moment on the record. Heart Stops I feel is a standout track. I feel it's um, a track on burials that is most unique um, in terms of what we have done over the years. I, I feel that it's a departure for us in a way that people have yet to experience and um, there's a coldness to the song. And I was uh, very focused on 
capturing that coldness and the bleakness of the lyric in the delivery of, of, of the vocal and even in the uh, beginning stages of working on the songs and on the demos and um, in that inchoate period I was, I was very um, intent on, on pulling the, the emotion out of, out of those words and I continue to do that uh, in the actual recording of, of the song and um, I think it's, uh, it'll be interesting to see how people react to that song. Rewind is one of the songs that was written in a period of time that uh, post-hardcore songs were coming out of us, which was very interesting because when we're writing a record, we never purposefully move in one direction or another, and um, there were these these moments of post-hardcore happening in our, in our creative period, and, and this was one of them. And, uh, it was one of those more immediate songs, uh, much like much like Seventeen Crimes, and it is one of the more straightforward songs, uh, like Seventeen Crimes are greater than '84, and when people would hear that song in the demo stage, they had a strong reaction to it. And I always felt that it would end up on, on whatever record we were making before we knew it was burials and it has and it fits well. The Embrace is the lost song of burials. It's a track that we had written somewhere early in the writing process and lost and somewhere towards the end, Jade was going through files and, and rediscovered it and, uh, and brought it to me and said, look, look at this song that we wrote, and I said, that's pretty good, what is it, where did it come from? And, um, as we played it for the rest of the band, and, uh, you know, it became clear that it was an important song and it fit very, very well within the context of what we were trying to create and ended up being on the record. Wild is one of those songs that really impacted me immediately when, when Jay played me the music. He would come with the music front to back and the tones of, of, of the drums and, the, the, the tones of the, the instruments really drove what I was doing with the top line, and um, it's a very it's a very driven and driving song, and that really informed um, the specifics of the lyrical content and, and the way I delivered. I wanted to do something that really fit within that staccato feel, and um, it, it reminded me a bit of, uh, of Primal Scream uh, in a way, in a strange way. So uh, that actually influenced my my thought process in, in creating the top line. Greater Than 84 is another one of those, uh, is, is one of the more direct songs like 17 Crimes or, uh, or Rewind, uh, and it, it was one of my favorite songs, but actually there's another body of music that Jade came to from front to back, and the melody came very, very immediately for me, and that actually uh, is a song that musically reminded me of that early, mid-period 80s, um, Nina Hagen, Josie Cotton, uh, New wave kind of combined with a, a bit of, uh, you know, perhaps even make it Ray Gun or Who's Could Do. And um, I, uh, I don't think that the title, the you know, the content has nothing to do with that. But I, some, there must have been some sort of subconscious connection to lead me to referencing 1984 in the title with the with the ace feel of the music. I don't know that anyone else would hear that in the song, but uh, but I did. And, uh, that song was always very very fun to play as we were rehearsing it. Forward to, to playing live. Anxious, it was was a second of maybe four or five post hardcore songs that, that we wrote, and it's a song that, that almost uh, didn't make the record. And uh, I wanted to, you know, as 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 I was hearing the music, I wanted to do something a, a little um, left of of what would be expected within the context of that music, and I wanted to to create that. A somewhat haunting yet melodic vocal over over that that driving music and um, it is uh, it is a song that I I really feel gives the, the record uh, a, a well-roundedness. Face Beneath the Waves is is one of my favorite tracks that we'd written during the period of time that we were creating for Burials and I'm very very glad that it made the record. I wasn't sure if it would and I feel it's really the perfect close closing to to the work as a whole. Um, I feel it represents a side of AFI that hasn't been represented uh, as well before. When, when we wrote it, I mean, as we're writing songs, we, we're never sure what's going to make the record, what's, which, what, you know, what we're going to lose and never see again, like in the case of The Embrace. So um, it wasn't until we decided which songs were going to be tracked and um, thereafter we're sure that, you know, 
did make the cut that it became clear that that should be the, 